Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Earth Science Regents of View podcast series created by Hummocks Middle School Earth Science Department. In this podcast, we're going to continue with the geologic history map on page 9 in the reference table. So there's one podcast for page 8. This is the second part of the series for page 9. So we're going to continue on page 9 here. One thing you have to realize is because this chart is so big, as we move to the right here, because we're going to have to associate a lot of epics and some periods, maybe even some eras with some of the information here, I might have to cut out some of the chart in order to fit it into one slide. So just keep in mind about that. So the next section we're going to continue with here is going to be the time distribution of fossils, including the important fossils of New York State here. So this entire section is actually quite easy to read. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit uh, in on this section, and we'll show you exactly how to read it. You'll notice that there are a number of black vertical bars throughout this entire section here. So I've highlighted what's good with the, what we call the trilobite section here. The way you read this, this chart's always read from bottom to top. So the bottom of the bar is going to tell us when that specific type of animal, in this case they're trilobites, came into existence, such as the early Cambrian. And the top of the bar tells us when these animals actually died off. And you can see here that they died off right at the end of the Permian in this case. Okay, we'll continue to the right here. The next section over is a group of animals called nautiloids. They came out in the late Cambrian, and they're currently still living. So way up there at the very top of the chart at the Holocene. So they're currently still living. The next grouping over are eminoids. They came around pretty much in the early Devonian, and they died off with the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous. So that's a very, very easy way to, to go through and actually read this part of your geologic history. Okay, next over you have your crinoids. They came about in the very early, Devo uh, I'm sorry, early Ordovician, and they're currently still living as well. They're all the way at the top of your chart. As we continue to the right, you have graptolites, and you have dinosaurs, and you have eurypterids, and above those you have mammals, and the vascular plants. And as we continue, we have the placoderm fish, which is the smallest amount of time it took for any of these animals to become uh, basically appear on the planet and then die off. They really only lived at the very end of the Silurian and died off at the end of the Devonian. So they lived for a very, very short period of time. You have your birds. And as we continue, we have the corals, the gastropods, and the brachiopods. So all of those groupings of animals are actually going to be read the same way. The bottom of each bar tells you when they became in, came into existence. The top of the bar tells you when they became extinct. Or if it extends all the way to the top of your chart, it means that they're still living. That leads us to the letters throughout these bars. And those letters are going to correspond with something called an index fossil. So you see all those fossils down along the bottom are associated with this specific letter. All these animals have something in common. They've lived for a very short period of time, and they live over a very big area. They make a very good time marker, because when these fossils end up dying off, they're going to be locked up in one specific layer of rock. Let me explain. So we're going to just give you a little bit more of an up-close shot. These are all of your fossils that are at the very bottom of your reference table. So let's take a little bit closer look in terms of how to read this. So we'll start out with the letter A. Letter A associated with this animal right here, it's kind of trilobite. This trilobite specifically lived and died during the early to middle Cambrian. So you can see that trilobites have been around, were around for a long time, early Cambrian to the end of the Permian. But this specific species of trilobite lived and died for a very, very short period of time in the early to middle Cambrian. Another example would be letter H. And this is a type of crinoid, specific species of crinoid, specifically lived and died during the late Silurian. We'll give you a couple more examples. Letter V is a type of coral. Okay, this specific species of coral lived and died during the early Devonian. Way up top, letter O, you have the mastodon and the beluga whale. You can see the evolutionary link between the mastodon and the beluga whale. They're all the way at the very top. Well, the mastodons lived and died during the Pleistocene, but the beluga whale is still living today in the Holocene. Okay, and letter Y is a type of brachiopod, okay, almost like a type of clam, that lived and died during the early Silurian. So the next section over 
and you can see I've, I've cut some of the chart out, is going to be the important geological events in New York State. So if you know how to use the life on Earth section of this chart, you'll also understand how to use the important geologic events as well. So let's take a little bit of a closer look. So for instance, if you want to take a look at the Taconian orogeny, the Taconian orogeny, when the Taconic Mountains formed, you'd follow the Taconic Mountains all the way to left, and you would identify that that occurred during the early to middle Ordovician time. As we continue, if you want to worry about the Acadian orogeny, that occurred, you'd follow that all the way to left till you get to the period section, what occurred during the early to middle Devonian. The Alleghenian orogeny, these orogenies are just mountain building events when these mountains form, occurred during the end of the Carboniferous, even into the Permian period. And then you could even associate some of the geological events with the inferred positions of the Earth's land masses as well. So you'll notice that all the continents are on here, but the darkest continent is going to be North America. Obviously, that's very important to us. And one of the more important stages okay, is going to be 359 million years ago when New York State was about on the equator. And if you followed that position all the way to left, actually New York was right on top of the equator about 359 million years ago at the end of the Devonian period. So that's essentially how you're going to read page 9. Again, there's a lot of information here. You just really have to make sure you have an idea how to organize your information and definitely be patient in terms of how to read this. Okay, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon.